Jill with Angel Creations. Welcome back to my craft room. Oh my goodness, I'm kind of a mess here, but that's okay. We are going to get our craft on just the same. I was in the pool and I, I hopped out and got dressed and put my apron on and said, all right, let's go get our craft on. I hope everybody is having a beautiful Saturday. I know I am. We are going to do a fun little craft today. I think it's going to be cute. It's kind of a play on words. You know how the, the thing is the price of eggs, you know, everything is the price of eggs. So, um, yeah, anyways, I just thought we would do kind of a farmhouse craft today. Get a little bit away from Easter. I know Easter isn't until April, but we are going to just take a little break right now. The wire's pulling there. Okay. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Get situated here, my goodness. So we're going to be using one of these Dollar Tree tags. It did have a big letter I think it was a C. It doesn't matter. It was a C. I took that off with my heat gun. I gouged it up a couple of spots and I sanded that down nice and smooth. We are going to be using the chicken, the chalkboard chicken that comes on a stand like that. I already cut mine off of the stand. Put my stand aside. I'm going to be using Dollar Tree vinyl that I cut with my Cricut, but again, you can use stickers or rub-on letters. I'm going to be using a little bit of this, what they call wire mesh from the Dollar Tree. It's really chicken wire ribbon. I'm going to be using a little of that. I already have one open though. We're going to be using Dollar Tree ribbon and Dollar Tree moss and we are going to get right on into that. We are going to paint our our tag white in white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to just pour a little bit on here like to do that but I'm going to do it this time because it's a really big surface before I do that I should have taken out well this is going to be tricky I should have taken out if I can our jute hangers here or a jute hanger all my paint running down all right we saved that successfully yay all right we'll put that over there and let's grab a good size paintbrush because we're gonna make this look more like a chipboard or not chipboard chipboard is what we are actually painting on we're gonna make this look like shiplap and so we don't have to even do a perfect cover here we just want to get rid of the, the pattern that was on the board when we started you could always turn this around and use the other side I do that a lot um, and you could just put brown paper bag, <clears throat> bag or brown paper packaging on it to make it look more finished so we are definitely going to need two coats. I was hoping one coat would cover just enough to be messy and we could, you know, um, distress it with our Waverly ink. But we have too much color showing. So I'm going to dry it with the blow dryer here or my heat gun. If you don't have one, use a blow dryer. It speeds up your time, your craft time in half. And so let me just dry this up and then we will put a second coat. I'll put the second coat on before I come back. You guys know how to paint. You don't need to watch me paint. So we'll be right back. Okay. Now I have two coats of white Waverly chalk paint on our surface. And I'm just going to take a ruler and I'm just going to use the width of the ruler and make some shiplap signs shiplap lines 
I need to go back to bed and get up on the other side. I'm telling you. Let me see if I can. All right. So we're going to start with this one. And I'm just using a pencil. And I'm going to stick with the pencil. Um, it just, it looks fine when you, you don't even, you don't even realize it's a pencil. Only you know. But you could use a marker or any, whatever you use to make your shiplap. And so we have a couple on here. My ruler doesn't really make it all the way up the whole length of the tag. So I have to just scoot it up a little bit every time. Trying to keep it straight there. All right, almost done. And then this might just have a little bit on this side that is perfect. We'll just give that a little bit too. All right, I'm just gonna go over them one more time with my pencil, making it nice and dark and a little fatter with my pencil. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm telling you, I have never had Florida allergies before. I Maybe I started last year, but I always, you know, I'm from New Hampshire, and I definitely had New Hampshire allergies, um, ragweed and things like that, but we don't have those in Florida, but now I think I am becoming allergic to our pollens because my nose is on a continual drip and I'm really tired of it. <laughs> when you are on camera and you are trying to get something accomplished, you really don't want to have to blow your nose in front of everybody, right? Oh, I forgot to tell you about my eggs. We're going to be using four of the eggs. Let's see if I have the ones that I used. You know the speckled plastic eggs that are on a, um, a circle thing at the Dollar Tree with pink and green and blue and they have speckles? Well, I just painted four of those white. We'll probably use three, but I just painted four of those white. And there is our ship lap. I'm going to take my uh, ice pick and just when I painted my hole, it kind of closed it up a little. All right, now let's get our sanding block out and do a little zhuzhing on our sanding. I like to, um, you know, distress it. I'm gonna blend these lines with my pencil a little bit so that they're not so bright and so sharp. Kind of smudging them, if you will. And then we're going to add, do a little more over there. And then we're going to add a little dimension with our antique waver. I hate sanding. Oh, it gives me the chills. To me, it's like chalk, nails on a chalkboard. All right, almost done with the sanding. All right, so that's what we have, a good smudged sand it effect we're going off our corners we'll do that after all right now let's zhuzh it up with a little antique waverly wax with a little stiff brush i like to use like a stencil brush if you have one if you don't just use the stiffest brush it just gives you a little more control so we're going to dab that onto our paper towel until it's almost dry and then we're going to go up with the pretend grain of wood that we are giving it and we are just zhuzhing this up giving it a little dimension we'll go heavier over our um over our cracks that we pretendly put in oops that was a little heavy go down from the top because we're pretending this has a wood grain so we're going with the grain even though there is no grain we're making it we're faking it till we make it that's the 
that's the name of the game, right? Fake it till you make it. All right, so that came out a little heavy there, but I like my corners to have a little more, and I like my edges to have an outline, so I'm just gonna use that heaviness to my advantage and do the same thing all the way around. Let's go up from our bottom. and down to our sides, outlining the whole thing, and then just run that up and down, smooth that all in. All right, I love distressing. I love the look of distressing myself, so if you don't like that, don't do it. I'm just gonna go up and down my lines a little bit darker. using the same paintbrush. I'll dip it probably one more time and we can get both of our next two lines with this piece, with the paint that is on this piece here. We'll go down this one. I'm just going back and forth, just darkening up our shiplap. All right. That line wasn't quite as dark, so we'll go over this one again, make sure they're all about the same. Although, they don't distress all about the same, do they, when they distress? All right, so this is what we have. Love, love, love that effect. Okay, let's put the cover on our Waverly Wax. And let's wash Jill's hands for a minute. I can't stand dried chalk paint on my hands. It's a little thicker um, than paint, and it is, I just don't like it. I don't like it, so I have to get this off. I'm gonna put you on pause and clean my hands, and I will be right back. Okay, they're not totally clean. I need to go to the sink and scrub them, but the most part is off here. All right, now, we have our words, and we um, have our chicken. You know what we need? To, no, we don't need to do that. I was going to paint the feet black, but the, we're not going to see them. They're going to be covered in moss. But we're going to have our chicken on here, a little blackboard chicken. And then our words are going to say, Wicked chickens lay deviled eggs. Isn't that cute? So I'm going to just cut these off of my um, press and seal because I want to lay them out a little one at a time, kind of. Okay, so wicked chickens is too big, so we're going to do it this way. We're going to cut it out, and we're going to do it up, and it doesn't matter. Can you see what I'm doing? Let me just make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're going to take the word wicked off of our press and seal, and then put it on our, put it on our tag. All right, so wicked is kind of a term of endearment to me because I come from New England and we use the word to, we use the word as a adjective. We use it to describe things. It's either wicked good or it's wicked yummy or it is wicked bad or it's wicked cold out. So wicked is not a negative word in my terminology but we are using it on oh, I just stuck my hand in wet paint <laughs> oh let me get a baby wipe before I touch anything don't put your hand and push down in the paint Joe <gasps> Let's see if I can dry my hands. So yeah, so wicked is 
you know, not a bad word to me. All right, now we're going to have the word chickens. Wicked chickens. Who loves deviled eggs? I love a good deviled egg, but you know what? In New England, they're a little different. When I came down here in Florida, so wicked chickens. When I came down here to Florida and I had deviled eggs, they put a lot of people and restaurants put a pickle relish in it. Look at me making a face. Oh my goodness, you probably, if you do it with chicken, I mean, if you do it with pickle relish, you probably love it that way, but we never made it that way. So when I came down here and dug into my first pickled egg, not pickled egg, what am I doing? Deviled egg, my first deviled egg. Um, I was so, I didn't know what to do with my mouthful. I really had a mouthful of egg and I didn't know what to do with it. And I thought, oh my God, what is the matter with this deviled egg? <laughs> and everybody else was just loving them. It was a Thanksgiving and um, it, everybody was loving them. And I thought, oh my God, what is in this? I couldn't figure it out. So let's see if we put lay here. I want deviled eggs at the bottom. So I'm going to write lay. And this is a one of those fonts that's kind of crooked and everything. So it's supposed to be that way. So it would be cute that way, you know. Little wicked letters. I'm trying to keep tabs on my press and seal because you know I have a cat that loves press and seal. Crazy cat. Alright, let me burnish this piece down. Only one of my cats is like that with the press and seal. I don't know what it is about press and seal she likes. It must be the smell or the texture. Alright, now Wicked chicken lay, wicked chickens lay deviled eggs. <laughs> so cute. Rub that on with our fingertip really, really well. And then our press and seal should come off easy peasy without any issue at all. All right, let me get rid of all of this press and seal. Pets are funny things, aren't they? I'm not gonna push this down in here though. I already learned that lesson. All right, look at what we have. Deviled eggs, no, no. Please forgive me, you guys. It's just, it's the way my brain is wired some days. I just, it's a lupus thing. Okay. Wicked chickens lay deviled eggs. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna put our chicken on. Piece of press and seal sticking to me. We're going to put our chicken on, and then we're going to add our eggs and moss. I want a good amount of glue for my chicken down to his feet. And we'll put him up right about there in the middle. So cute. While that's gluing, we're going to just put a couple of polka dots on our eggs. And I'm just going to use a paint marker to do that. So I already painted my eggs white. You can paint your eggs whatever color you want. Oh, I can't even get the cap off this. What is going on? Shake it a little more and I'll really give it a good pull. Oh my goodness, it just exploded all over my table. Thankfully, it did not get on the eggs or the craft. I don't know what is the matter with it. It's 
even on the scraper. Wow. Did you guys see that? Yeah. All right. Let's try this again. <sighs> Couple little dots. Just some dots on my eggs. And I have four painted just in case something happened. But I think I, I like odd numbers. All right, so there's our little speckled egg. There's one. Might be able to just speckle them right in here. No, because I'll have to turn them, but I can do a few. Little speckled eggs, aren't they cute? Got little freckles. All right, let's take this one out and do that one. We got little dots and big dots. Ooh, that pool was refreshing today. It's a hot one. I think it's 90 something out there today. And I shampooed my carpet and I worked up myself a sweat. So I decided to go take a dip in the pool and I'm so glad I did. So refreshing. Okay, so now we have our speckled eggs. <laughs> know if you can even see that you can see a lot more than I can I know that all right so now we're going to put a little bit of moss down on our bottom of our sign here Ooh, that was tight and I'm just going to put it a little bit of um, glue right across his feet And we're going to put as much glue, I mean, as much moss as we'll take, you know. We'll see what we get. We're going to just stretch it out and put it across. Put a little more there. And we'll just stick it down. And see what sticks. We don't really need a lot, but we do want it full. So, we need a new glue stick. We'll put a little bit more down. I want it all the way to the edges, I've decided. So, we're going to put a little more on the moss itself and then a little more on the edges. This is such messy, messy stuff, isn't it? But it's really adorable when added to a really cute farmhouse craft. See what sticks, and then we're going to put our eggs down, our little speckled eggs. Hold that down for a minute there. Just give you a look see. Now we still have a little bit of the bottom showing. That's okay, we, we're fine with that. Now we're gonna take our um, chicken wire and I'm just gonna measure, I guess I wanna cut it right about here. So that I can tuck this. I want this to be able to hold my eggs. I'm probably gonna need a couple of pieces. So I'm going to turn it over and bend it up over, bending my chicken wire so that it goes over the bottom. Hope that makes sense. And then I'm going to glue it. And I have a couple of uh, coffee sticks, you know, if I can grab them. I grabbed one. Let me grab another. And after I glue this down, I'm going to put a coffee stick 
holding it. So I'm just going to put a line of glue all the way over a little bit further because my coffee stick is longer and down with the first stick. my little finger protector so we can give it a good bit of pressure to hold 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 gotta keep that down there gotta keep that down or we will be in a mess now we don't need quite the next whole piece of stick so why don't I cut that while we're waiting And we're going to do the same thing right here with our piece of stick that I cut. And if it's still too long, we can fix that at the end. I think it's good. So we're going to give that a good hold. Actually, got to stick a little glue under the tip of the last one as well because we didn't go far enough with the glue. The, the holding is the hard part. I think that's like, I don't have the patience for the holding, but um, it's one of the necessary steps. <laughs> and then we'll just fold in the rest of our wire here. And I have a couple of pieces of popsicle sticks or tongue depressors that I cut when we did the carrot. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to anchor this right back down to this part. And I'm just going to cover it with one of these tongue depressors. Wrap this side in as well. I'm bending my wire with my fingers so that it is not going against us, if that makes any sense. Put another tongue depressor piece. Any piece like this will do. Always save those bits and bobs. And we're gonna turn this over and add another piece of this chicken wire. I think when we turn it over, we might not need it. But I think in order to hold our eggs, we might need to, yeah. So this is a good start. It's too low. So we're going to add another piece. Where is my... Where's my chicken wire? I cut it. Did it fall? It toggled did. Is it right in front of me? <laughs> Where is it? Okay, I don't want to take up all your time looking for it, so I am going to put you on pause and find my chicken wire. <laughs> all right, please hold. <laughs> okay, it was on the floor. I found it. All right, we're going to do this again, and not so heavy this time. So I'll cut it a little shorter, and we are just going to stick this right over here on the side. I'm going to actually twist mine. You can glue yours. I'm actually just going to twist it right on to the other wire if I can. And um, I'm also going to add some glue that's probably not going to work because this just broke right off. The wire is probably not, ouch, the wire here is probably not um, strong enough to twist it. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use my anchors. So we'll cut this coffee stick right in half and <clears throat> anchor that like we did the others making sure that we have all of our wire folded over though and nothing is sticking out 
and then we're going to do the same here but we're not pulling it tight because we need it to stick out I don't really feel like I'm getting my point across today but you'll see hopefully you'll see <laughs> oh, we're holding we're holding so I have been having a lot of technology issues. Facebook changed our business page to something called the new, I don't remember, experience or something like that. All right, now I want this bulging out and I want these kind of connected here. So that's what I'm just going to do is connect it a little bit with my fingers and twist it a little bit with each other. And then once I know that it will hold, I'm going to tuck this side under and do the same thing with the stick. But see how much we have this hanging down it's not tight to the surface I'm going to bend it over so that it's not flush I guess the word is right I'm going to find my words so speaking of all the trouble I was having with my new Facebook um, business page I mean, I've had it for like three years, but they just changed it all up on us. And I was trying to ask for people for help, you know, the kids, <laughs> the ones that know technology. And I was not using the right terminology. I was saying, I can't, I don't have access to my Facebook, which I didn't for a while. I didn't at all. I tried to go live last Saturday Night Live and I had no access and oh my goodness, it was a really, really upsetting evening for me. But since then, I figured out, ouch, ouch, that was hot, figured out some of it at least. I think I'll be able to go live this Saturday night on Facebook Angel Creations. Woo, that's hot still. All right, we have a really messy back, but we have an adorable front. Look at that. Now we're going to just stick our little eggs down in this little cuteness here under the chicken's butt, and we are going to glue it in. Just glue it in, and I'm putting in a little... Um, under kind of the hay or whatever you would call it, you know, our moss. I'm going to try to twist this a little bit over here. It really isn't that hard to twist it if you can get a good grab of it and then it will stay. All right, there's that. We need another egg. We're gonna try three, but they might not fit. Three might not fit. Let's see. I'm gonna smush one down. I'm gonna try to smush it in there. Maybe. Push it in as far as I can. <laughs> and which egg? I think I'll take, I got one more egg to go. I think I'll take this one right off here. And that one's just going to go right on the top of all of the other eggs. Oops. And I'm just going to add a pinch more moss into the pocket. 
So let me grab a pinch here. That's it, really, a little teeny weeny pinch. And I'm gonna stick that down here where my eggs kind of, let me get my tweezers, where my eggs kind of meet in the, the, the corners, you know what I mean? The little, I don't know what I'm saying. Sometimes I can explain things as I go. Other times I really feel like you guys are hanging up the phone on me. If I were me, I'd be hanging up by now. <laughs> if you are still with me here, put an emoji of a clock or something so I know that you guys are sticking with me. I'm gonna stick a little bit more moss down right here. And I'm just using tweezers so that I can get into my nooks and crannies of the chicken wire. There we go. And then while we're at it, let's just add a little bit more moss up here. I'm just going to pull a little more out. And we're just going to stick it in. And wherever it glues, it glues. How's that? And then we're just going to stick a couple more little sprigs over here. And really, that's it. Just a little tiny bit. Sticking over here. Alright, now I'm going to give it a haircut and I'm going to turn it around so you can see our adorable tag. And it sure is adorable. Wicked chickens lay deviled eggs. Cute, right? So cute, so cute, so cute, so cute. All right, now we have to find that wild piece of jute. And I would like to put a couple of, um, well, actually, yeah. I would like to put a couple of beads on this. So I'm just going to put you on pause because I want some buffalo check beads. And I think we'll put a bow in the bottom corner. So let me just put you on hold for a moment. Oh, look at the mess we have here. The mess we have here. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. All right, let's throw these beads. These are beige or tan beads painted that I got at the Dollar Tree. And they are falling out of their little bag because they don't have a home yet. I am going to take my first bead. This is a, a beater that uh, my sister sent me. I think you can get it on Amazon. And I might put up a link to that. Okay, so we're going to do white, buffalo check, and beige. And then white... I don't know if we'll get those all on there. We might not. Let's see. You know what? I don't need this because we could do this right. This makes it easy on jute, but we can use this as a, the toggle as a needle. So I'm just going to do that again. White, beige, no, white, buffalo check. These are big toggles, so they're not really fitting. Yeah, we can do that again, so we'll do it again. White, we didn't know if that would be long enough. Buffalo check and beige. Then we're going to put this back through our hole. Like so. And look at that. We have our little beads. I'm gonna knock my drink over there. We have our little beads here at the top. Cute, right? All right, let's make a little beaded 
Now let's make a bow real quick to get this mess out of the way. I have to clean my craft room today. I've shampooed the carpet. I've gone to the pool. I don't know if cleaning the craft room will happen. <laughs> but I can't stand all this moss. So let me just get some of this out of the way so I can focus on a little making a little ribbon bow here because this is just I can't stand it. I love crafting. I love making a mess. But some things I can't stand about crafting. One thing I can't deal with is paint on my hands. Dried paint. It feels I don't know. Can't stand out. Ooh. And then the other thing is moss everywhere. All right, I'm going to take my favorite ribbon and we are going to just make a really, really small bow. And we're just going to start with a, what do you call it? Like an award ribbon. Just a crisscross. Just a crisscross. We're going to start with that and then we're going to do the same thing with um, a little piece of black and white buffalo check. And I'm going to make both of these together. Hopefully both of these will come alive together here. So we're going to pinch our burlap up in the center and I did the same with the gingham and we're just going to put that on top. We're going to get a little zip tie. I'm going to use black this time because I like to save my clear for when I'm not using a black ribbon. And then we're just going to feed that into our zip tie. Isn't it exciting? I have thumbs. I have thumbs again. Yay, thumbs. I just moved my ribbon. Fix that real quick. And I moved my burlap, so I'll fix that real quick as well. And then I'm just going to turn this over and pull it tight with some pliers because, you know, you know what I always say, my fingers. You just cut that off. And then we have an adorable little bow. Little burlap and gingham. And then, that's so cute. I'm just fluffing it. And then I'm just going to give it... A little dovetail on the bottom of my burlap. Cut this one a little bit shorter so it matches the other side. And then I'm just going to cut. <laughs> oh well, we'll do both. We'll do both. Um, dovetails. I was just going to cut my other ribbon on a slant, but we'll do dovetails to both. Why not? So there we have it. We just need to take a little piece of jute. I'm going to take a little piece of jute and wrap it around so that we don't see our plastic. Let me show you. Just going to take a piece of jute Hold it with my thumb, wrap it around, making sure to hide that little piece of black plastic. And I'm just going to give it a good double knot in the back, snip off the excess if I can grab it. And then we have an adorable little bow all ready for the bottom of our project. It's got a little bit of jute in the middle, really cute. And I'm just gonna glue that right down here on the bottom, kind of going in a little, let's put our glue right on our bow so we know where it's gonna touch. Stick that right on our, right on our chicken wire. 
and this project is finished. This is a great time for you to give me a thumbs up. Sharing is caring, so go ahead and share this video with all your friends, family, and social media. Make sure that you um, make sure that you hit that subscribe button because we're going to do a giveaway when we get up to 700 subscribers. If you are not already following me over on YouTube, on Facebook, you should come over and join us, Angel Creations Facebook. Every Saturday night we do a live craft and you can talk to me there live. It would be my pleasure. Make sure when you come that you uh, let me know that you're following me from YouTube because it's nice to know where my audience is coming from. All right, everybody, this is the final project. I think that came out adorable, adorable if I do say so myself. The back is pretty messy, but the front is adorable, if I do say so. All right, everybody. Until I see you next time, I hope that you have a very blessed rest of your Saturday. I might have to stick a little bit more glue under my bow because I think I held it up a little too fast. Yeah, and gravity said we're not ready yet but that's okay because you don't need to watch that glue up and i will see you i hope you have a really great rest of your saturday i have tomorrow off have a blessed sunday and i will see you on monday but until then i hope that you be good and do good bye now thanks for watching thanks for taking the time and staying this long and watching all my dropsies. Bye now. It's not going off, is it? <laughs> oh, it's one of those days. All right, bye now.